Today we are going to be going over how to utilize the fluoride tray method. Once you have been given permission by the faculty to proceed with the fluoride treatment, you can obtain your supplies necessary to perform the procedure. Before you gather your supplies, you'll need to determine what size tray that would fit the patient best. Your, all of your supplies are going to be loaded, located right here in these cabinets and drawers behind the faculty desk. The trays all vary in size. They're all located in the drawers below small, medium, and large. The colors are yellow, blue, and white. You can estimate the size of the arch the patient may need uh, when choosing the size. A good rule of thumb in all children is that they, if they have six-year-old molars, a size small will fit. Most adults and anybody that has 12-year-old molars would be a medium, and then occasionally we have some adults that have a large arch and it is not necessarily based on body size but more of their arch size. Next, you'll want to select a tray that is large enough to cover the distal buccal line angle and most of the posterior teeth without causing gagging or gingival irritation. You'll go ahead and gather your supplies which will be one paper towel, lay it out on the counter and then you'll need to gather tongs to be able to decide what tray you'll need and we have decided we're going to need a medium for our patient so we'll go ahead and gather a white medium tray out of this drawer here lay it on the paper towel the next thing you need to do barehanded without gloves but clean hands come over to the other supplies when retrieving them make sure you hold the lid between your fingers so that you not do not contaminate the lid or other surfaces you will use tongs to reach in and get those supplies. You'll need two cotton rolls and two cotton tip applicators. Once you have completed this task, you will move your materials over to the fluoride cabinet and decide what fluoride you'll be using. So you'll go ahead and gather a mint flavor uh, gel You'll ask the patient if they prefer orange or mint. Our patient has preferred mint at this time. This is a gel form, so you want to shake it up thoroughly before dispensing it on the tray. You do not want to dispense it on a tray that has been in a patient. Make sure this is a clean tray. Be sure that when you dispense it, that the tip does not encounter the tray. This is a gel form, so you will then dispense a thin ribbon of fluoride into each arch top and bottom. If not a thin ribbon, then you can dispense three dollops and spread them out evenly in the tray. You do not want the tray to be more than half full, almost a third full. This is what the Q-tip is for. You can evenly distribute the gel around the tray. So now you are ready to perform fluoride treatment on this patient. Ms. Danielle, I'm now going to complete your care in a fluoride tray and this is to replace the outer ridge mineral layer of your teeth to prevent future decay. For children, you may want to say, I'm going to use special vitamins on your teeth that will make them strong. Once you get the patient leaned back, you will then inspect the patient's oral mucosa while using the light for signs of trauma or any ulceration areas that may contraindicate the use of fluoride application. Not too extensive, but more than likely you'll have already observed these areas while cleaning the patient's teeth or while applying sealants. Then you'll have the patient sitting upright in the dental chair and instruct them not to swallow the fluoride during the procedure. You'll then hand them the suction and make sure they know how to raise the bar up and down if they need it. You're going to make sure the fluoride is evenly distributed before placing it into the mouth as we did in the beginning. You will then grab the air water syringe. Make sure to blow air until no water is present in the line. You're going to ask the patient to open and begin drying all the teeth. This doesn't have to be completely dry, just enough to get a little bit of excess saliva out. You can then ask the patient to remain open to maintain oscillation. You want to leave one finger in the patient's mouth so they do not close. This is just because most of the time when you remove your finger, the patient closes down out of habit. 
If that happens, then you just have to redraw the teeth. One thing about the tray is you'll notice that there are two tabs. One is in one tab is imprinted with the up on the tab, and the other has oral B imprinted on the other tab. The up indicates that that is used for the upper maxillary arch. So you will make sure the up part of the tray is facing up when you place it in the mouth. You're then going to reach and grab the tray. You'll then pitch the tray closed so that, it, so that you have the upper tray on top. Approach the patient's mouth at an angle. You'll then insert one side first and then ease the other side all the way in. You'll then want to reach in and mold the tray to their upper and lower arch. You'll then have the patient Insert the suction to hold the lower tray down, and this will help the patient prevent excess ingestion. You can then obtain around the premolar area. Once these are placed, you want to have the patient bite down, but you, you want them to bite down, but you don't want them to bite down so tight that it reduces or closes off the suction. Once the tray and suction are in the patient's mouth, you will then want to pick their lips up and make sure to stretch them out over the tray as they need to when their mouth fills up and closes. The tray and the suction are in the patient's mouth. You'll then want to make sure their lips are outside of the tray and creating a tight seal so that the suction can remove excess saliva. You'll then ask the patient to tilt their chin down so that everything runs forward. You will want to make sure that the excess saliva that is being pulled through the suction tip. If you cannot hear the suction working, then you'll ask the patient to move their tongue. A lot of times kids will hold their tongue right on the tip blocking the suction from working properly. And then they end up swallowing the fluoride. When you feel like your mouth is filling up, kiss the tube by pulling your lips tight and it will create the suction easily. You will then sit and observe the patient during the procedure to prevent excess fluoride ingestion for four minutes. You can also continue to tell the patient not to swallow any of the solutions to use the suction. If the patient drools, you can reach up and grab one of the Kleenex and have the patient to hold under the chin. Some people do have an excess amount of saliva. Once your four minutes is up, you'll grab a Kleenex and then you'll control the suction at this point. Show the patient how to remove the suction, but keep it close to the patient's mouth while removing the cotton rolls tray and excessive fluoride while having the napkin underneath. Before you get all of the tray all the way out, you simultaneously insert the suction back into the patient's mouth. Then you allow the patient to hold it again. If the tray and suction are out of the patient's mouth, they instinctively close their mouth. This way they do not have the opportunity to close their mouth except back onto the suction. Sorry. You'll then dispose of the materials in the trash. If this is a child, you'll ask them to open and drag the suction around for a little bit because they do not always coordinate moving it around. Then you'll want to tell the patient to keep doing that until they feel like everything is out of their mouth efficiently. The last thing you can do is take the suction back from the patient and then you can physically inspect the patient's mouth one more time. Sometimes patients can have a reaction. You never know if the patient has never had a, this treatment before. People could also have a sensitivity to the solution, so it's always best just to use your light and mirror to do another oral mucosa exam. While using the light in the mirror, just look for any evidence of trauma or irritation due to tray, the tray or the fluoride gel. You do not want to add any water or rinse after fin finishing. If there is any evidence of reaction, you'll need to alert faculty. If there's any evidence of ulceration, we, will, we would recommend magic mouthwash. You will then ask the patient, do they have any sore or irritated areas? Do you have any sore or irritated areas? You'll then give the patient post-operation instructions. Don't eat, drink, or smoke for 30 minutes. Uh, this allows the fluoride to uptake during that time. And also, do you have any other questions? Okay. 
While doing this, make sure you are wearing all PPEs and adhering to the proper asepsis guidelines throughout the procedure, and that is the end of the tray method. Above are some photos of where to find these products in clinic. After the patient has left, we will then add the appropriate ADA code and procedure entry to the treatment record. At the end of the appointment, document the treatment record in blue ink, only the type of fluoride, the flavor, the method used, tray or varnish, add patient instructions and any recommendations made. These codes are in the operatory on the blue sheet shown above. In the event of fluoride poisoning, some signs and symptoms of acute toxic poisoning can usually begin within 30 minutes of ingestion and may persist for as long as 24 hours. This begins in the gastrointestinal tract, stomach. The fluoride in the stomach mixes with hydrochloric acid to form hydrofluoric acid that irritates and induces nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal cramps, and pain. This can increase the elevation and thirst. In the event of an accidental acute overdose of fluoride poisoning during a clinical procedure, you will need to alert team members one and two. Team members one are, is the first person that you see. Team member one will then alert the next person that they see that becomes team member two. You will then go to that cabinet and find team member one and two member two slots and follow the directions listed on those sheets of paper. This information and supplies is located behind the faculty counter in the lower cabinet labeled Ambu Bags and Drug Kit. The clinician will then remove all materials from the patient's mouth. Have the patient induce vomiting using mechanical force. They can do this by sticking their finger down their throat. Remember to always stay with the patient and never leave them alone. You along with faculty will determine the need for a binding liquid such as milk, milk of magnesium, or lime water and administer it when the patient is not vomiting. You will then need to decide to transport transportation to the hospital for treatment and call 911 if the patient cannot be transported. While waiting for emergency services, monitor the patient's respirations and breathing patterns until they arrive. Once treatment has been rendered and emergency treatment is being monitored at the hospital, this can include IV administration of glucose and calcium. They may have to induce gastric lavage by pumping the stomach, a serious reaction can occur requiring intubation and cardiac monitoring. Once the situation is under control, appropriate documentation of the incident must be done by student and faculty on an accident and first aid report form shown here. This is located behind the faculty counter in the filing cabinet.